This year's Pew Teaching with Technology Award recipient is Robert Talbert, Associate Professor in the Math Department at Grand Valley State University. Since 2008, Robert has been flipping his classroom by creating instructional videos and other digital content that students view before class, which frees up time for more meaningful learning experiences in the classroom. In addition to the flipped classroom model, Robert has been using programming and coding software as a means of reinforcing math concepts in which students construct their own knowledge as builders and makers. Generally speaking, I'm trying to incorporate any technology that allows students to make things and construct their own knowledge about the concepts that we're learning and also to access information at any time in multiple modes. Okay, for example, uh, making videos for my classes to replace in-class lectures uh, using the simple YouTube technology and screencasting technology. Uh, that's a technology I've been using for several years now uh, to take my existing course lectures and demos and move them off-site uh, onto a YouTube channel where it's free, uh, can be accessed, can be re-accessed, rewound, paused, replayed, uh, with the intent of having students get some exposure and construct some knowledge prior to arrival in class, which we can then use the in-class time that's freed up to do even more complex things. Uh, some other technologies that play into that ethos uh, would be just the simple use of a Google document, for example, to gather student questions about the material prior to showing up for class. So I know, uh, based on their self-reporting, what the questions are going to be before we even show up for class, and that's where we start. I tell the students that I have some plans for the class period, but those plans go into place only after we finish your questions. <laughs> With whatever time is left over after we discuss your stuff, that's, what, that's where my plans come into play. I've been doing the flipped classroom model since 2008, uh, even before I came to Grand Valley in 2011. Uh, overwhelmingly, the students are very enthusiastic about this model. I know this from course evaluations, from informal discussions, from informal midterm evaluations that I give, uh, constantly asking for feedback on how it's going, and uh, students are almost entirely positive, uh, almost never negative about it. Uh, the, one, the students who do express some negativity about it, uh, it, it at least opens up the opportunity to have some frank conversations about the nature and the role of the professor and the student in a classroom, and that usually ends up in a positive way. So yeah, students are very, or the students get it. I mean, students understand that this is for them. This is to, for their benefit, that there are certain things that they can do to help themselves learn. First and foremost, I just want to keep perfecting my craft. I'm not all there yet. There's a lot of kinks I still need to work out with the way that I implement the flipped classroom. I don't think the flipped classroom is not going away for me. Uh, I'm just gradually, every time I get a new course prep, it's, I just I approach it as if I'm going to flip this, and so I just go through it. Um, technologically, not all the courses that I teach have a, a really good body of out-of-class ready material like screencasts or videos, and so that's one thing I'll have to sort of work on in the future is building up or curating some really good materials for those classes or creating them one or the other. Uh, apart from, from that, um, I really want to keep exploring this idea of, of coding and computer programming in the mathematics classroom. I really feel like students need to be, in a math class, need to be able to code and write their own code, whether that's uh, you know, programming formulas into an Excel spreadsheet or writing a Python program or working with a functional programming language, which is uh, something I've been thinking about with one of my courses is switching the, the programming paradigm from imperative to functional programming. Um, this is just another aspect of the building the maker ethos that I really want to bring into class. I feel like programming and mathematics used to be used to be one and the same. They kind of drifted apart in the 70s and 80s. Now I feel like they need to come back together again. So even in something like calculus, I want to see how we can start building in sort of a data science approach to calculus, which seems to be more more relevant to the kind of time that students are working in right now. So I'm just beginning to think about that. And I think it's going to be an exciting thing to continue to develop over the next three to five years. I've got nothing but support from my dean and the provost's office and my department chair and my colleagues. And I would not be sitting here talking to you if it weren't for that support. I'm only as good as the people around me. And I haven't been the smartest person in the room for five years. And I love that. And so I get so many great ideas from my colleagues. Um, to start thinking about, wow, just, they challenge my assumptions about things, and they support me when I stick my neck out and do crazy things, you know, like flipping the classroom. And so uh, it's absolutely, this is a, like a perfect place to be doing what I'm doing.